Oh, hey there. Hi, how are you? I am well. What are you listening to? I was just listening to this Philip Glass Concerto Fantasy for Two Timpanists and Orchestra. What's that? Isn't Philip Glass a minimalist composer? Yes, he is a minimalist composer, along with Steve Reich and Lamonti Young. If you don't mind me asking, what is minimal music? Minimal music started out in the late 1960s as a new language of music that, as stated on Thinkwist.com, minimalism is not based on individual notes but rather on musical patterns. This means that instead of using notes or chords to create a cadence point, the minimalist composers use repetition for a musical phrasing and texture. So, what about Philip Glass and this timpani concerto? As it says in his biography Philip Glass was born in Baltimore and went to study at the University of Chicago, the Juilliard School, and Aspen. Glass has created over 20 operas, 8 symphonies, dozens of concertos and movie scores. Speaking of concertos, the timpani concerto was commissioned by Jonathan Haas in early 1990, and as Philip Glass stated in his program note, it has grown into a double concerto requiring two timpanists playing a total of nine timpani between them. This shows that Glass's works can morph into something more than what is expected, even when having ten years of other works happening in between when the concerto was commissioned to when it premiered. I see. So the style is similar to that of Numa Copper by Russian Circles. New what? By who? Numa Copper by Russian Circles, a post-rock instrumental rock group from Chicago. I'm afraid that I am not familiar with that genre. Could you explain it to me, please? Post-rock is a vague blanket genre used to describe more modern rock. A fantastic way to describe it is from Encyclopedia Britannica, where it is stated that post-rock genre of experimental rock music that combined elements of art rock, jazz, and alternative with electronic influences to create richly textured soundscapes. This genre can also be generally described as avant-garde. Many bands of this genre, including Godspeed You, Black Emperor, Morgwai, and Explosions in the Sky feature an almost identical use of rhythmic layering and repetition, which, according to you, is similar to that of minimalism. In fact, post-rock and minimalism are almost identical in the way that songs are created. Okay, but that helps with the genre. Now how about the band? The band formed in Chicago in about 2004. The three members have produced several albums that encompass the post-rock genre. The first album that they produced, Enter, was released in 2006 which contains the song Numa Cabra and a few other great post-rock hits. Tell me more about this song. Upon an oral analysis, the time feel in a common meter with a tricky push and pull between the weak and strong beats given by the guitar and drums in the intro. There is a constant repetitious pattern of the same off and on feel from the beginning until the 117 mark. The feel changes then to a more upbeat feel given by the drums and the bass while the guitar runs a few loops causing a massive build up when the drums become erratic at the 224 mark which gets resolved at the 248. At the release, the guitar creates a new melody and is joined in by the rest of the band that creates a half time to a double time feel, only to come to another build up that releases at the 332 mark. At this point the guitar and bass use a pizzicato feel to another melody. When the drums re-enter, a heavy half-time feel occurs with the drums in another loop from the guitar and bass under the new melody. At about the 420 mark, a build-up is being foreshadowed by the guitar, which increases to yet another release at the end. I see. So in short it is a song that deals with a thin to thick texture that leads to a bunch of releases. Exactly. How about the Philip Glass piece? Well, the piece overall is in a compound meter, which feels as if in 10-8, with thick and thin layering all over the place. In the intro, the timpani have an ostinato pattern while the chimes are giving the big hits with the orchestra giving textural volume, this goes on until the ensemble goes from piano to forte over and over again. After the repeat of the intro comes the first timpani solo at the 022 to the 032 mark. Then the upper strings and timpani give the big beats while the upper winds supply the subdivision. The first 45 seconds are repeated again with some changes in the solo and a build up to the 130 mark. At this point, the strings and what sounds like the lower reeds continue to play the big beats while the timpanists play over them with a new line that goes to the 154 mark. 
the tympanus and start to play a more complex rhythm of eighths and sixteenths. Then the upper woodwinds enter at the 205 mark creating a textural build-up. The release happens at the 216 mark when the upper woodwinds in the xylophone play the melody that the tympanus created at the 130 mark with the tympanus. This melody goes on until the 239 mark when the solo percussion drops out entirely and the upper winds and the strings have the melody. This part sounds free and flying above the clouds, and also would be considered an exposition of the first movement. A slight volume build brings the soloist back in with the same melody as before at the 302 mark. Another build happens to a release at the 324 mark, where the intro is played again, only without the chimes, but with the upper strings giving the strong beats, thus making it an a prime. The a prime lasts until 409 when the brass and snare come in, and upper voices leave. Also, there is a decrease in volume. Then at the 415 mark, the upper voices and tympanus come back in, resulting in a textural build, that explodes at the 427 mark. At this point, all of the patterns that were played so far in the piece are all playing at once, and is very thick. This goes until the 503 mark, where there is a dramatic decrease textural volume, and becomes very thin. The lower voices provide a drone for the tympanus, who are also playing softly, as they finish their last rolls. When, the upper voices come in one last time for the soft last note that ends at the 526. Wow. That is a lot to put in a first movement. And it sounds like all those lines that were played individually were to let the listener know that it's all going to collide together. It's true, and another way that our music is connected is the sporadic feel changes after a major build. I see. Well it looks like our genres are not that different from each other's and that they both have a similar structural roots of repetitious patterns and textual layering. Don't forget that they also share the resolution change after a huge build. Well, it was good talking to someone who knows about music. I think I'll go home and check this Philip Glass and minimalism thing out. Likewise. And now I want to hear more music in this post-rock genre in Russian circles. Goodbye. See you later.